Hello and welcome to the new health conversation. I'm Peter Greenlaw. I founded it and have a registered trademark. Uh, I think we really need a new health conversation. And today we're blessed again to be uh, interviewing Dr. Paul Arciero, arguably one of the greatest nutritional researchers in, for almost four decades. He's just been uh, appointed a full, he's a full tenured professor now at the Department of Sports Medicine and Nutrition at the University of Pittsburgh. An enormous uh, congratulations to you, Dr. Arciero. So, okay, let's get right into it, all right? For nearly four decades, you, you and many other scientists and people that you've worked with, as far as I know, you've been chasing the silver bullet. Was there really something from a nutritional standpoint of view that could really make a difference in health, weight, not just losing the weight, but also being able to keep it off? That's a question I get a lot of the time. So now after your new period studies on the r 2 protocol, it features intermittent nutritional fasting, not intermittent fasting and protein pacing, which is what you have championed and actually wrote a book about it. Um, just explain to the audience how <laughs> overwhelming the results are. In science, I say it all the time, it has no emotions. It doesn't have an agenda. This is not Dr. Arcio's opinion. This isn't some fancy promotion. This is the hard science that you just cannot deny. So based on what I just said, what would you tell the audience about what you now believe is the silver bullet and why? Well, up until this point uh, in my journey and what I read and been made aware of through the scientific literature up until this point, there had not been uh, a scientifically proven uh, lifestyle strategy that induced these many beneficial changes. And there's no denying that the scientific breakthrough from the intermittent nutritional fasting and protein pacing combined to produce the magnitude and the breadth of health improvements up until this point um, is truly uh, the silver bullet and, and is the scientific breakthrough that myself and all the other scientists have been searching for up until this point. So yeah, I can say this with the resounding uh, voice of, of affirmation. Uh, yes, this, this is one of the, I believe, greatest breakthroughs we've had in terms of optimal health uh, discoveries uh, in my lifetime. And I'm tremendously excited uh, to be able to share this. But yeah, the findings uh, collectively, collectively um, taken together are, are findings that we've not witnessed before. Well, I just want to, for the audience, I want to give them some of the high points. And then there's a couple more things that you can certainly add in in terms of the results. But um, as far as what you told me that you're you and, and your other colleagues are are shocked and you're getting calls from people all over the world saying that these results, they're gonna change the world. I mean, it's almost like they wanna question them because they were so unbelievable and unexpected because obviously you literally did analysis. Plus I think you told me that the analysis, especially in the in these recent, the three studies you did, the diagnosis or, or the, uh, yeah, what you were able to look at like, eight years ago, nine years ago, it wasn't even possible. So the analysis was even more thorough, but the results were, were really incredible. So let's just look at a few of them. First of all, 80% uh, were women, 20% were men. No one was allowed to exercise. Not that you're against exercise. You're head of the sports nutrition department. I'm sure you're not a, against exercise. Um, and it was a staggering that in, in 30 days uh, across the board, people lost like 16 pounds. Now let's contrast that with a big study that was done, I happen to have it here, in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which was 12 months, and people in 12 months lost 16 pounds, which your people lost in, in 30 days, but also what was so startling, they gained overall between six and 8% overall lean body mass, which had never been seen before. I want you to comment on this. I just wanna go through as quick as I can. Blood sugar went down 6.2%. And what was an anomaly was insulin also went down. You can touch on that in a moment to explain the significance of that because people just say, oh, well, blood sugar went down and insulin went down. And that's a huge deal. LDL cholesterol was down 
cholesterol was 15%, triglycerides were down 24%, uh, hunger went down, hunger went down 41%. You saw a 25% reduction in inflammation. And over eight weeks, there was a 33% reduction in visceral fat. And uh, people lost about four inches in waist circumference. And then you taught me a new term. The reason that I want to, I want to read it to make sure it, uh, I'm accurate. You said now there's something called normal weight obesity, which means viscerally obese, vi viscerally obese, meaning the visceral fat, et cetera. So um, can you just comment on why no one's ever, am I right? I don't want to overstate it. You're the scientist. Has anyone ever seen these kind of results before with any diet, nutrition, exercise plan ever, ever? <laughs> No, these are, like I mentioned, Peter, they're, and as you just summarized, they're scientific breakthroughs, uh, groundbreaking in every way that we were able to document this in such a short period of time. Um, and, and across the board in many of these health parameters that we look at as benchmarks, benchmarks for disease, cardiometabolic disease. So in the scientific medical community healthcare setting, we have these uh, biometric benchmarks that we look at um, in terms of body weight, waist circumference, blood lipids, blood pressure, blood sugar, all the things that you just mentioned. Um, and when one of those changes, that's considered a win. Um, but the fact that we were able to document uh, such a, as I already described, you know, such a collective um, improvement in all of these. Weight loss was just a, a side effect. So like a throw-in. Like, okay. It was a throw-in, yes. And so <laughs> that's what was so uh, rewarding for us was to see uh, the degree in which these things change in such a favorable way. Um, and so that's what was so exciting. And that's what um, I think the world needs to be made aware of is that uh, there's a solution uh, there's a strategy that's simple and easy and efficient to incorporate into their into your daily routine that produces the most potent return, the most potent benefit on your health. That is an enormous win-win, right? Because we've been instructed and almost misinformed that you should do things slowly and gradually in order to um, derive a benefit over the long term. And the research does not support that. We know that those who can lose and improve the most in the shortest amount of time have the greatest, the greatest rates for long term success. Um, and so that's the win-win here. And that's what I'm most excited about. I share all the time with people that it's easy to lose weight. There's so many things you can do. I tell people, we have evidence that people can lose weight eating M&Ms and Dunkin' Donuts and drinking soda. You can literally lose weight with those things by just reducing your calorie intake. Is that going to result in an improvement in your health? No, of course not. Um, that's going to make you uh, less healthy. Well, more at risk for disease. What we're demonstrating is that you can achieve uh, enormous health improvement at the same time you're losing maximal body weight. Well, and I think, again, let's go to the science. Let's go. So CDC has come out and said that 92.3% of the people in the United States, nine out of 10, are metabolic and healthy with three or five factors, overweight, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. All five of those factors came down in 30 days. Again, never seen before, but let's go even farther. They're now saying one in three adults are pre-diabetic. Again, you saw blood drops in blood sugar and insulin. I want you to touch on that in just a moment, okay, before I forget. Um, they're, they're saying that 100 million people now have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In 1975, I checked this, there was almost no incidence of it. If you had fatty liver disease, you were an alcoholic, okay? Cirrhosis, um, right. Cirrhosis, and now they're saying that they in 50% of Americans have at least one chronic illness. I mean, the reason we need to do this, and you and I have talked about it, and I know you're very passionate about it. This, this, it's more than just research. This is like life-changing, literally life-changing information for people. And we're not disparaging drugs. We're not curing any diseases. We're not saying any of that. All we're saying is that here's the evidence that you can make an incredible difference in your life with something that's really simple, it absolutely works. And the other thing that's so incredible is that 
you have you have the clinical evidence to back it up. So before yeah. we conclude, please clarify the difference between the blood sugar A1, blood sugar, whatever came down, but also insulin, why that's such a huge deal. Cause I don't think most people understand that because so many with one in three are insulin resistance. Mm, that's a problem. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. The, 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 the decreases of blood sugar and insulin are telltale signs of metabolic health improvement. <laughs> so when we can, uh, uh, provide people an opportunity through a lifestyle intervention to reduce their blood sugar, their glucose is what we call it, and their insulin. Insulin is the hormone that's released from our pancreas that is the chaperone for glucose, blood sugar, to get gain access into the cells of our body so that it can be metabolized and burned as an energy source without having the insulin working in the way that it should to be able to serve as a chaperone of the sugar glucose into the cells, the blood sugar stays very high. The insulin stays very high because they're not doing their job. They're not working collaboratively with each other. And so that's what is the result of uh, diabetes, type two diabetes and insulin resistance. So people who have high blood sugar and high blood insulin, that's type two diabetes, that's insulin resistance, that's cardiometabolic disease. So what we're able to document, document in very short periods of time, weeks, um, is a significant reduction in both the blood sugar and the blood insulin level, suggesting and meaning and showing that um, this combination of intermittent nutritional fasting and protein pacing is highly effective at improving cardiometabolic health um, to a very, very significant degree. Um, and that's um, that's a, a, a tremendous finding for the reasons that we just described. Those are, again, high glucose, high insulin are telltale signs of cardiometabolic disease, um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease included within that. Um, so that's the target. <clears throat> Those are the two substances found within the blood that we want to primarily target to elicit the greatest improvement in health. Um, particularly cardiometabolic, cardiovascular metabolic health. Well, um, I, so I forgot to mention another huge thing, and I didn't realize <clears throat> until you taught me, but a huge contributing factor apparently to fatty liver disease is high triglycerides. And yet mm -hmm. you saw a reduction of 24% in triglycerides in just 30 days. And I know you said that you, you, you also have seen this really um, do wonders for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You, you've seen it also in the, in the, in the patients and the people that went through the, the studies. Am I correct about that? Yes. So we didn't actually measure uh, markers of liver, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but we measured the blood right. markers right. that are associated with it. Correct. Insulin, glucose, triglycerides, um, and some other enzyme activities of the liver. We also measured some um, liver enzyme activity and all of those improved significantly over the course of, of several of our interventions. And you, you mentioned triglyceride, right? That's the, um, that's the blood circulating uh, source of fat that we have that eventually accumulates in organs and in places that we don't want to um, around our midsection and around our vital organs, such as the liver. And I'll give you an example. We had um, levels of 120 milligrams per deciliter within the blood, and we were able to document reductions down to in the 70s, the 70s. Wow. So it was a sign yeah, significant reduction in the triglyceride level. So yeah, it's really um, so very it, exciting. It wouldn't be anything to overstate that this this could change the world. I mean, it could change everything. You know, when I talked, I you know, I talked at that big doctor's conference in California. I actually talked to you on the phone with one of the major doctors. And and they said to a person, look, Peter, we can't know what we don't know. We're treat for for example, they were saying that they're when they have people that are overweight, that they're, you know, saying, you know, a half to a pound a week is about the best that they see. But these results, this no other well of course they're not even doing period studies in these other diet programs nutrition but no they don't have anything that would even come close to this 
when you reduced all five of those and and more than just that. But, you know, I think in conclusion, do you feel, and I guess you've actually gotten feedback from top researchers around the world that have, you know, just called you up and said that these results are going to change the world. Am I overstating it at all? I don't believe so. Um, they, they seem to be very excited about it. I know we are. Um, and so that's why we're here. And that's what we're determined to do is to um, change the world by providing them an, a, a, a safer, healthier, more effective uh, lifestyle intervention um, to help people's health improve drastically. Um, and so, yes, I, I truly believe this, Peter, and I know you do too. And this is an opportunity for all of us to uh, get behind this and, and let this be the leading voice in terms of providing us um, a lifestyle and a strategy scientifically proven to improve Shameless our plug for me, the new health conversation. I think <laughs> this is it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Arciero. You're welcome.